Joe, certainly won't be the only question going back to last week's game, but I hate to harp on just the, the turnovers, but you know it kind of defies uh, all math to, to win at minus five through two games and be 2-0. and uh, It's almost unheard of. Uh, whether it's the mess charge, uh, which Mario talked about after the game, which came up again, I think, in the third quarter, but you guys avoided it blowing up. Um, how do you better avoid some of those situations? And on the interception, was that just – would that have sprung for a touchdown? Because it looked like Forsyth was downfield on the safety, and if that's complete, yeah. that Johnny had a lot of grass. Yeah, I mean, just going to the to the first part of it, it uh, you consider the two big, biggest statistical factors that determine the outcome of games, and it's explosive play margin and turnover margin. So we've uh, we've hit our explosive play mark uh, two out of two games, but obviously, you know, the, the turnovers is something I guess you'd refer to it as a statistical outlier right now that, that, that we're on the minus end of that. And, you know, it, uh, you know, it's something that we need to get resolved, whether it's quarterback decision making, you know, like you said, whether it's some of the ball handling stuff uh, or our ball security when, when it's a, uh, you know, quarterback receiver running back running it. So those, those are certainly things that we got to, we have to clean up moving forward. Oh, and on, on the, on the, the, this, you said the one to Johnny. Yeah, yeah, it was close. I mean, it looked I couldn't tell. It looked like the guy got grabbed, but uh, it was it was a double screen, and you know we thought if we could have picked that block up and completed it, we would have had a shot. But uh, you know, if it, if it's not there and the guy's covered, we we got to talk in the tower. We just got to throw that thing in the ground. Can't make a bad play worse. You got to move on to the next play. Correct, Joe. JJ Jacobs and Rivals. Coach, it seemed like the RPO game was very effective on Saturday. Um, but I was wondering how you felt that Tyler Shuck is doing with his reads on those things. It's hard, hard to tell exactly what you had in motion there. I think he's improved from game one to game two. And you just want to see that, you know, incremental kind of, kind of small steps forward uh, with every game, particularly for a first-time starter in a, in a brand-new offense. And I think that's the benefit of what we do in the run game. Uh, and we talk about numbers, angles, and grass that when the quarterback's making, making the correct decision, it's getting the ball to the, to the tailbacks where, where you have, you know, advantageous numbers uh, either blocking or with angles. And, uh, you know, when it's time to pull, then you're throwing it to the, to the right person based on coverage. And, you know, this style of offense is trickling up. So, uh, you know, I, I think he, he's made improvements from game one to game two, but I think, I think he would agree that we still have a good ways to go. And that's a positive thing. It just it means there's, there's room for growth. Ryan Thorburn, Register Guard. Joe, what do you think it would be like to get ready for an opponent that wasn't on the schedule in less than 48 hours and play kind of a, a pickup college football game? It'd be like drinking water from a fire hose. Uh, <laughs> it'd come at you very quick, but you, you, uh, you, you'd have to do it. It'd be a ready, fire, aim situation. So you, you'd, you'd find out, you know, what the games you had available. You'd break it down as quickly as possible, put a plan together, practice it, and get on the field and play, but it's certainly a, uh, a situation I would imagine we hope to avoid. But if we have to, like Coach says, no excuses, spot the ball, and we'll, we'll go play a game. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Joe, Travis Dye is averaging like 18 yards a touch um, for you this season. What's made him so effective in, in this offense for you? I think his speed, I think his versatility. You know, one of the things about, about Travis also is he's an unbelievable team player. You know, it brings a lot of energy to the sideline. So I think when yeah, he has a skill set that you can run between the tackles like a running back and, and kind of catch the balls on the perimeter, you know, makes him a very valuable uh, weapon. And then Coach Masher has done an unbelievable job with that group, kind of getting the guys in place, you know, to uh, run plays that match their skill set. So, yeah, Ch Travis has, has done, you know, fantastic things, at, you know, running the ball, catching the ball, and, and, and a, as a teammate and a leader as well. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Last two games, you've really dominated line of scrimmage in the second half. Run game has kind of put the game away. What have you seen on film in terms of how you guys have established that? Is that simply your, your line's more rested because you're rotating? Or kind of how do you see your, your team establish that line of scrimmage so well in the second half? I think it's probably a combination of things. You know, obviously, as, a, as an offensive philosophy, we want to be as balanced as possible. You know, but a lot of it is contingent upon our ability to run the ball successfully, you know, and that creates numbers at the box for us to be able to to throw the ball downfield, but I, I feel like we've had a good plan going in. I think we've, uh, you know, as a collaborative offensive, uh, you know, staff, you know, the, 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 the tweaks that we've made at halftime to maybe do a couple different things. Uh, I think it's a credit to our, our linemen, our tight ends and our, and our guys running the football. But I think it's also has a lot to do with the culture of this program, you know, and coach 
talks about all the time, our, our fourth quarter program and, and putting the fours up and, and what that means to our guys. They really believe in that. And I think that just that mindset and that mentality and that culture that once it gets to the fourth quarter, you know, we're going to be able to lean on people and, and allow that to take over. I think that's probably been the biggest thing. Julian Minnesota, KZI. Back-to-back weeks of DJ Johnson getting a receiving touchdown. I mean, you talked about it after week one. I mean, has it surprised you at all how effective he's been um, switching positions like that? I, I wouldn't necessarily say surprised because I've seen DJ do those things in practice, you know, during camp. Uh, I, I'd say the surprise would be is where he was in the depth chart kind of heading into the season, the position change and, and all those things. So, uh, but he's a, he's a great young man. He works incredibly hard. You know, Bobby does a does a great job with with that group. And it's like anything, he got his opportunity, and uh, he's made the most of it. And he's really produced. And and we're seeing the touchdowns and the catches, and that's great. But he's also been a tremendously physical and dominating force in the run game too. So I think that's been he's done just a good job there as he has catching the ball. James, so just going back to it's like your origins with RPOs, because I, I don't think that. It's, necess- it's certainly not new territory uh, over the last probably five, ten years in college football, but it's definitely escalated. Um, and what you've done has been excellent so far. But like, what was your what was your origin story with with being exposed to RPOs? Where did your kind of uh, uh, prowess with it? When did it begin? And who who kind of brought it to you? Wow, that's. I mean, I can remember the first one that we ever ran was when I was with Coach Brookhart at Akron, and it was. Uh, we were playing Miami of Ohio, and I'm not getting at the specifics. I remember it like this. We were on the left hash, and it was 12 personnel trips right, and we ran inside zone left, and the tight end ran a stick, and the, uh, the wing tight end ran a flat. We called it 15 lock stick, and we completed the ball to the flat like it was against four press coverage. And, and we really didn't – we weren't delving into it too much at that point, but I remember that's something we, we kind of started doing. Uh, did a little bit more in 08. We did some of it when I was at UConn. We were a little bit more of a mix between, you know, 11 personnel and some of the heavier sets. But, you know, once we got to Fordham in 2012, as I'd say, when we, you know, had, I would say, both feet in a boat, but really started doing things at the first se- first level, second level, third level, you know, reading just about everyone and doing things that not a lot of people were doing at that point. And I think we've just continued to develop it over the years and, you know, add new things, add wrinkles, who we're reading, you know, uh, how, how we're pairing it with our base runs. And I, I think that's been the most exciting part, not just the origin of it, but the evolution of it as well. AJ. I can find that clip for you somewhere, James. I'd have to probably go back on a VHS tape or a DVD, though. Coach, um, I was wondering about the how you determine going into a game, because um, we've seen both games now, the, the run game gets better and better kind of as the game wars on. Part of it's having fresh legs in there at running back, it seems, with Travis. When you go into a game, how much of it is like how you already know what the run distribution is going to be or the carry distribution? How much does it feel during the game? Who, who's going to carry that rock? I think there's a little bit of a um, basic approach uh, relative to what the plays are in the scheme uh, entering the game. But I, I don't mess with that at all. Co- Coach Mastro, he, he's, he handles that stuff. He gets the guys in there, has a feel for what they run well, has a feel for who's fresh, has a feel for who has a hot hand. And, uh, you know, I call the plays, and then the back who's in there is in there, and he executes it. We think they're all capable of doing, you know, the entire kind of system. But, uh, like I said, he, he, he has a great feel for those guys, and uh, we're confident in all of them. But I, I think, you know, once again, that coach does a good job maximizing those guys' abilities. Matt Freem. Uh Your offensive line, I don't think they have a false start. They don't have uh, a holding penalty. Um, five new guys starting with this group at the beginning of the year, obviously. What's made this transition just so smooth? And, and is it surprising that they've been this clean this, this early for you? No. Uh, it, you say, I mean, that's certainly a great start by them. Um, but I think it's, it's about the talent that we have, right, and, and the kids and their, their ability and their collective kind of psyche and approach and mentality. Uh, that, that, that they're, uh, you know, that the chip was on their shoulder. You know what I mean? When people look at them and say, all right, well, you lost five starters. You lost the Outland Trophy winner. You know, these are the guys that are going to have to do it. So I think they really were, uh, you know, that that's something that they were excited about, that, that, that they were going to be a new group that was going to have to find a way to get together cohesively and collectively and play very well. 
and then you just look at the, the, the guys that are coaching them. I mean, between Coach Mirabal and Coach Cristobal, that's like having two PhDs in a room at the same time. So between the talent, the kids' mindset and their approach, and then who's coaching them, and I hope, hope a little bit of what we're doing scheme-wise helps too. But uh, you put all those things together, and, and I guess what you have the first two games is a result. We have time for two more. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. You were without Micah on Saturday. Curious on your impressions of how Josh, Devin, and, and Chris filled in. It's, you know, Coach just indicated that you might be without him again. Just kind of what's the development you want to see from this last week to, to the next? No, I thought, the, I thought they filled in very admirably. You know, Josh had a, had a real nice catch on the, on the speed out there to the boundary on a first down play and then had a huge third down catch uh, against man-to-man a little bit, a little bit uh, later in the game. And then De- Devin caught a great glance route, you know, caught the over route on the naked. And, you know, the two things that really don't show up on the stat sheet, you know, was his blocking on Jay Red's run down by the goal line. And then the uh, long run that Travis had on the four minute drill, you could see, you know, Devin racing down the field and getting a block on a, on a linebacker. So, you know, it goes along with coaches next man in philosophy. You know, if someone goes down, the person who replaces them is going to do as good or better of a job. And our kids don't flinch. They thrive on adversity and, it was great to see, when, like like DJ, when those guys got their number called, they made the most of their chances. Last question, Ryan Thorburn. Joe, when you uh, first got here, you said you would base, you know, what you run on what the personnel is good at, what they can do. Is it safe to say with what we've seen so far that Tyler can pretty much do anything that your playbook calls for? And he said you're going to – you haven't even shown a lot of it yet. <laughs> Just your thoughts on Tyler so far. Uh, I've been very pleased, first and foremost, with it, with his approach, and that's a big thing. Because there's a thing. I'm gonna talk about quarterbacks. Don't tell me you want to be great. Show me you want to work to be great. And he pu- he puts in all the time that's necessary. And you could be a good quarterback and do things, you know, just when you're required. You know, normal meetings, normal practice, and all that stuff. But this guy's in here on his own. Uh, you know, watching the film as soon as it gets on on the computer. You know, extra time uh, with all the other position groups. So. Uh, his approach has been fantastic. And then just, uh, you know, how he's worked during the week to grasp the game plan and then the execution of it. So, uh, he, like I said, he's done well, but he's he's got a, a ton of room to improve. But when, when someone wants to do it and shows they're willing to work and then they, they take that to the field and, you know, continue to improve, I think uh, I think the sky's the limit, but we got we to gotta keep grinding away and keep working hard at it.